Welcome to part two of the Farewell Fiddle. I'm building a violin out of locust wood and a piece of spruce. Fell down the backyard. I have a few days left. We're counting down about five days until I have to get out of the state and abandon the house I built. And I'm going to start off with working on the purfling and then we'll see where it takes us next. Here's the purfling groove all cut. And I'll zoom in here for a closer look. So what I've done is I hand sketch the little points with my pencil. I just estimate how I want them to look. All right, and then all I do is I come at it with uh, my little X-Acto knife and this little gadget which is made out of a old steak knife and all that is for is for digging the wood out of the groove just like that not a lot to it so just patience finish off those points and then I can bend the purfling I'm outside working on the recurve after installing the purfling I've completed the back here and I'm working on the top it's important to keep a light nice and low I'm gonna start off using this small gouge very small diameter I'd probably say it's 3 8 of an inch in a radius and just working on this lower point being mindful of the grain of the wood Sometimes a pair of these helps. It's not real exciting, but it's fun to carve. This little uh, workstation you see me using it's just a scrap piece of uh, three-quarter birch ply I had laying around. I think I showed it once before. It has a lip under the front edge so it can't slide away on me. And then these two surfaces to butt a work up against. It's a big help. You can just throw it on the workbench or in the winter time. I throw it in the house on the dining room table keeps me from ruining the table. I made a new tool today. I'm going to show it hopefully before I'm done. I made it out of a um, heh. I'm always stealing things from my wife. I stole a knife out of the kitchen when she wasn't in there. I'll show you what I did later. Okay, I have made my way around a couple of laps around the racetrack here. I started with the small gouge, and then I used this larger one, three quarters of an inch and work my way around not touching the tighter radius on the outside edge I want to fare this in so a couple laps around with this I used my little planes to uh, start to fare this all in and I'm happy with how it looks it's all fared in a little scratchy and gouged up so, drum roll please, uh, the tool I invented today, or made, I mean, I went in and I snuck in quietly and stole this knife. It's nothing special, uh, cheap, made in China, steak knife or something. But what I wanted is I wanted a scraper with the same radius as this gouge. So I made it, I uh, used the uh, sander, and then I squared it off real nice and edged it and it's a nice little scraper and boy I like this thing 
I get a little tighter um, radius here, a little crisper edge. Now you can buy these things. You can buy anything. And in violin world, they'll sell it to you. A scraper is nothing more than a piece of hardened steel of any any type that you square off and put a, a nice little edge on it. And there are myriads of YouTube videos on how to do such a thing. I encourage you to look one up, make your own scrapers, and don't get caught up in buying a simple tool that you can make yourself. I don't know if you remember, but I sold my house and we're packing to move, and that has been all consuming. And behind me, you'll see my rig that I've got all packed up. We're leaving tonight at about 3 in the morning, maybe 2.30 if I get up early enough, and we're heading to Tennessee. I haven't packed up the shop yet, and I've been squeezing in time to work on this violin uh, late at night and when we're not packing and filling a storage unit, and I'm not repairing wheel bearings and changing transmission fluid and whatnot. I worked hard last night. Uh, the plates have evolved a bit since you saw them last. See a few wood shavings. I've actually started my plate tuning. You can see some of my numbers there. Uh, this is, remember, locust wood. It grows here in New Hampshire. It's a very hard wood. Um, I have it thinned down, for you guys that want to know, to 2.4 millimeters in the upper and lower bouts, which is pretty thin. And this is my belly plate, and I'm about to mark out my F-holes. And then I'm going to cut the F-holes. And hopefully, get that done and then start fitting a base bar. When I get back from Tennessee, I'm only going to have four or five days to get out of here and hopefully have this fiddle together. Have you noticed how everything now is a life hack? What used to be a tip. So I've got a violin life hack for you besides my cool little tight radius scraper made out of a kitchen knife I stole. So you've got your violin plate done, you've marked out your F-holes, and you say to yourself, what am I going to do? How am I going to cut these out? So you look on the internet and you see these nifty little cutters, $60, $70. Well, you could go to Home Depot or Lowe's or the hardware store and just get a couple of drill bits if you want. These are just wood drill bits designed for wood. So it's got a little point on there. And I keep them in this little block of wood so they won't get dull. And I've got uh, 5 sixteenths and quarter inch. And those are the perfect size for the eyes there and up there on the violin. And you just use your fingers. Do your best to center the drill bit. In the eye, I mean, I eyeball it, and you just sit here and turn by hand gently. And you can't see it good doing it righty, but turn it gently. You don't want to chip the violin plate, and before long, you make a nice little hole through there. And then you know what you do? You break out your $10 coping saw that you used when you were a kid and had no use for it. And you finish cutting out the old F-hole. Piece of cake. Looks like we're ready to attach the base bar. I've already fitted it. We've obviously finished our F-holes. The glue is hot in the honey pot here. Alright, so we're going to go for it. Obviously, it's a one take. Can't uh, practice our little uh, 
thing here and then rehearse it and do it again. So I am going to put a good bead of glue on the base bar here. This is the hot hide glue. Love this stuff. A good bead and it's a nice hot day so it's uh, easy to use. I've already pre-marked where it goes. So I don't have to worry about that. Let me do is we set it right down. A good look. And we're just going to shimmy it just a little bit and take some of the air out. Just shimmy it into place. Make sure we're on our marks. There. Okay. I'm just going to hold it for a few seconds. And then we're going to jump on it with some of these clamps. And there we go. Got her clamped up and we'll let her dry overnight. It's kind of late again. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Made it back from Tennessee. Drove a thousand miles straight down and a thousand miles straight back. And my base bar has been sitting in the shop waiting for my return. So I worked my way out here and I finished up my base bar. Looks good and I did a little more fine tuning that you have to do once the base bar is in. And I was going to show you my this is my secret book, Violin Data. And I save the stats for every fiddle I make. Now earlier in a video I showed you my my numbers for my modes and you'll see all this scribbling here. Well that was me doing some tuning and you'll notice some big variances in the numbers. The big jumps are due to the fact that it was awful humid. We had a heat wave and the humidity was way up there and what that does is it lowers the frequency of the plates the more flexible. And right now it's 56 degrees. It's been chilly for the past two days. And the humidity is down, so the plates changed a little bit. So tonight I'm going to finalize where they sit and make sure I'm happy. So here we are, set up on my speaker. I uh, just put some tea leaves on here. And then we're going to try this out, the computer... Um, predicted 372 so we're going to give it a shot this is the back plate locust wood let me turn the volume up here all right so what that is showing those are called the nodes. It's not vibrating there much. It's like a, like a hinge point for the vibration. And that puts our mode 5 for you violin geeks at 372 hertz. Now we'll check the belly plate. I've got the belly plate sitting on here. And I'll sprinkle some tea leaves. And uh, see if I can find out the future. If that's not enough, I'll steal some from the other plate. All right, I'm predicting 350 hertz, which is a half tone difference. I don't hear anything. Here we go. we go we got the old angry eyebrows and these are our nodes and we were at 350 so that's a good spread so that's a half a tone difference between the back and the belly plate and I'm happy with that we'll go ahead finish the edges and we can assemble the corpus uh, we had another busy day today, but I did manage to finish off the back of the violin and I've glued it onto the corpus. I'm about to take it off the clamps and the mold out and see what she looks like. You remember the my uh, toothpick trick.
I didn't invent it. I think Stradivari did. Or <laughs> one of the guys before him. Get this bad boy over. This is the locust back. So we can pop this mold out. And it ain't moving. Sticking a little bit. There we go. Needs a little encouragement. Be gentle. There we go. And we're out. There you go. Had a little boo boo here, I'll show you. Look at this. Look what I did. You see that? I crushed it with the clamp. So I'm going to do a little repair. And thankfully, on the back side will be that lining that goes in there. My wife always says this will make a nice candy dish or something. I won't have it. We've got to finish the violin. So now I'm going to put in the rest of the lining here, and I will. Next step will be attaching the top, and of course, putting in my label. I got four days left to be out of here, pretty much. And I was thinking before I install those linings, I have one more of those little violin hacks to show you. So what I wanted to show you was one of my favorite violin tools, and it's something my wife came up with and she made for me. It's a bag. She made a cloth bag, and it's full of rice. It's heavy, and they sell all kinds of real fancy uh, holders for your violin. Nothing beats a bag of rice, period. I use this all the time, and you just stick your fiddle on there. Uh oh, don't break the piece, it's broken. And you wiggle her down in, and she settles in there perfect. And it won't move. When you're setting your neck and stuff, you can put all the rice up at one end, set the violin down here, and have a little elevated platform. Anyway, I just thought I'd show off what she made. You might want to try making one for yourself. It's getting chilly out here tonight. I've got the lining gluing up. I have my secret weapon, the chicken lamp, heating things up. Um, I've got to focus my attention now, in the interest of time, on the fingerboard, which needs a lot of work. It's way too thick and too wide. And setting up to carve my neck. I'm going to have to end this video for now. Four days counting down. I gotta stay up late tonight and put a dent in this and then next time I'll have the body together and let's hope I can finish up that knack and get this thing put together before I have to beat feet out of New Hampshire. See you later.